Hello all. Welcome to this course on elements of mechanical engineering. My name is D.A. Ramacharilu and I am working as an assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering. In this lecture, we are going to study the working and we have to study the efficiency of France turbine and also the working of axial flow turbines. Now this course is offered to aeronautical students in sixth semester like we are in the second module where we are studying the basics of steam boilers and also the working of hydraulic turbines. In the previous lecture, we have seen different types of turbines, classification of turbines and from that we have two types of turbines. They are mainly classified into impulse and reaction turbines. In impulse turbines, the pressure that is available at the inlet of the turbine is only kinetic energy. Whereas in reaction turbines, we have both kinetic energy and pressure energy. Pressure energy that is available at the inlet of the turbine. Now in this lecture, we will see the hydraulic efficiency of a Francis turbine. So the working and all has been discussed in the previous lecture. Now we have to see the values of work done, sorry, the values of hydraulic efficiency. So, let us see the basic definition of uh, hydraulic efficiency. If capital H, that is net head, then input of the turbine is equal to WQH. We will see clearly what is W. W is nothing but weight of the water. Q is nothing but the discharge of water that is coming out of the turbine and h is nothing but head net head okay net head of the turbine and then when we calculate the efficiency a hydraulic efficiency is equal to power developed by the runner divided by power supplied to the turbine okay we have two types of powers using these two types of powers we can calculate the hydraulic efficiency so simply we can write hydraulic efficiency is equal to power developed by the runner that is runner power. I am simply writing this as R dot P where it stands for runner power that is the power developed by the runner and uh, denominator power supplied at the turbine. This is water power that is W dot P. So W P is the power available at the inlet of the turbine. We know the water that is coming from very height from a turbine like in a penstock the water is very uh, is coming at a very high speed. Now this water will have some power. So that is taken in the denominator and this water when it touches the turbine veins the turbine will be rotated. Now this rotation of the turbine will be will have some power. This power is taken as Rp. Here this is Rp and this is Wp. Runner power over water power. Now if we write the formula for this, we simply have runner power is nothing but Vw1 multiplied by U1. Vw1 is nothing but whirl velocity at inlet. In the previous lecture, we have seen what is Vw1. Vw1 is nothing but the velocity which is responsible for the movement of the vane. Okay. Because it is written as Vw, V suffix W1. So the 1 stands for at inlet. Okay. Vw1 is the whirl velocity that is available at inlet. So this whirl velocity is the thing which will make the turbine to rotate. Okay. So this is multiplied with the velocity of the vane at inlet that is u suffix 1. Now this multiplication, this product will give you the power runner, power of the runner, nothing but Rp. Okay, so this is Rp, runner power and divided by g into h. G is nothing but the gravity and H is the head of the water that is available in the reservoir. So G into H is nothing but 
the power of the water that is coming out of the penstock. So this value will give you the efficiency, that is hydraulic efficiency. How much amount of water power is being converted into runner power, that is mechanical energy. Hydraulic energy is converted into mechanical energy. That is where we will calculate hydraulic efficiency. Now upon simplification, we will get this formula. If the velocity of the whirl at the exit is zero, then we will have this formula. Okay. If the velocity is not zero, that is whirl velocity is not zero, then we will have this formula. Okay. We will have VW2 value. If VW2 is zero, then this is the efficiency. Okay. In ideal condition, the VW2 zero will be, sorry, the VW2 value will be zero at uh, outlet. That is when we will consider this as ideal condition for the working of a reaction turbine, which is not possible practically. We will have some value for VW2. Using this, we can calculate the hydraulic efficiency. So, the final hydraulic efficiency formula is VW1 multiplied by U1 plus or minus VW2 U2 over G into H. Here, the hydraulic efficiency of the Francis turbine varies from 85% to 90%. So it will stay between 85 to 90%. Remaining 10 to 15% is lost due to friction. So whatever the amount of water that is coming out of the penstock, it will directly touches the hydraulic turbine. Even though the water coming out of the penstock will have some particular energy that is also after losing due to friction. So some power is lost due to friction between the pipe surface and the water. And even that, after that, the water will have some remaining power. This power is again converted into mechanical energy or rotational energy. Even in this process also, 10 to 15 percent of its energy is lost. Okay, this should be kept in mind. So this is the hydraulic efficiency of a Francis turbine, where it is simply remembered as Hydraulic efficiency is equal to runner power divided by water power. And then we will have second type of efficiency. So in mechanical efficiency, so mechanical efficiency is nothing but it is shaft power over runner power. Simple. I will write the previous formula also. Hydraulic efficiency is equal to runner power divided by water power. Now here mechanical efficiency is equal to shaft power divided by runner power. Observe carefully. We are writing all these formulas at, in a single slide so that we can remember them easily. So here mechanical efficiency is nothing but. So the name itself indicating the mechanical efficiency is the thing which will uh, directly relate the mechanical energy and the some kind of other mechanical energy. We will only discuss the mechanical energies here. We don't consider the water power or the any other kind of power. We don't consider hydraulic energies here. We will consider only mechanical energies where mechanical efficiency is equal to shaft power. That is power available at the shaft. Okay. So generally we have a turbine. This is a turbine. And uh, from the turbine, we will have a shaft that is attached to the generator. So this is the generator and this is turbine. And here we will have a penstock, penstock which is attached to the reservoir. Okay. Now, at this point, that is the joint between penstock and the turbine, we will calculate the water power. So here water power is generated. And inside the turbine, we will have runner power. And here, this is shaft. This is the shaft which is connecting the turbine and the generator. Now here we will have shaft power. Okay. What water power, runner power, shaft power. These are the three different types of powers that are available in any hydraulic turbine. Now in order to calculate the mechanical efficiency of a Francis turbine. So the formula is we have to consider the points where the mechanical energy is being transitioned. Mechanical energy is being converted from one place to another place that is shaft power that is the sh power that is available at the shaft like this one and the power that is available inside the runner 
okay the power that is being developed inside the runner is now being converted or transmitted to the shaft from where it is transmitting the power to the generator where the generator will produce electricity now when we calculate mechanical efficiency it is nothing but shaft power divided by water power sorry this is not the formula shaft power divided by runner power so this is the formula where we can calculate mechanical efficiency of a hydraulic turbine okay so and after the mechanical efficiency which is used to calculate how much amount of mechanical form of energy is being transmitted to the uh, turbine sorry to the generator so after this we will calculate overall efficiency like overall efficiency is nothing but it is the overall uh, power transition that is being done during the working of a turbine so we have seen here here we have water power runner power and shaft power in hydraulic efficiency we have considered the water power and runner power in mechanical efficiency we have considered the shaft power and the runner power now in this overall efficiency we have to consider the first one and the third one that is if we name them 1 2 three we have to consider the first water power and the third one shaft power ultimately in any kind of efficiency we will always write the formulas like output by input whether it is a power or anything output by input so here the overall efficiency can be calculated by comparing the first step and the third step that is the first step is the where the water power is considered so this is water power so this is the power of the water that is coming out of the the pen stock and this is shaft power or the shaft power this is not water this is shaft power which is the power available at the shaft now using this we can calculate overall efficiency that means how much amount of hydraulic energy is being converted into shaft power that is mechanical energy that is giving to the generator okay this will give you the overall efficiency okay here the shaft power is the nothing but capital p which is represented with capital p and water power is nothing but small w weight of the water q discharge and h is the head of the water so this will give you the mechanical sorry the overall efficiency of the turbine now the values of uh, this overall efficiency will stay between 80 to 90 percent see in the previous slide we have seen the mechan hydraulic efficiency lies between uh, 85 to 90 percent this is hydraulic efficiency now here the overall efficiency will stays between 80 to 90 percent because there are a lot of uh, losses like mechanical losses hydraulic losses frictional losses all these losses has to be considered when uh, the turbine is working now see here we can generate a relation here between hydraulic mechanical and overall efficiency so we have three efficiencies here hydraulic efficiency which is the ratio between runner power and water power and mechanical efficiency which is the ratio between shaft power and runner power and the third one is overall efficiency which is the ratio between overall efficiency it is the ratio between shaft power to water power so we can simply write rewrite this equation to form a relation between these three okay now see here when we multiply the hydraulic efficiency and the mechanical efficiency here the hydraulic efficiency is nothing but rp divided by water power product of uh, mechanical efficiency that is shaft power divided by runner power so this is hydraulic efficiency and this is mechanical efficiency when we multiply these two things these two gets cancelled and we will have shaft power over water power which is nothing but the overall efficiency so from this we can simply write overall efficiency is equal to hydraulic efficiency multiplied by mechanical efficiency so this is the relation between the 
different types of efficiencies of a hydraulic reaction turbine. Okay, this is valid for only Francis turbine. Now, this is not only valid for Francis turbine, this is valid for any kind of hydraulic turbine. The overall efficiency is the product of mechanical and hydraulic efficiencies of a hydraulic turbine. Now, we will see some uh, formulas that are related to the Francis turbine. So, working proportions of Francis turbine. So, first one is ratio of width of, to diameter. Okay. So, what is the this ratio is defining? So, generally we can see from this formula, width is D, capital B and uh, diameter is capital D. So, this is the ratio and this value always stays between 1.01 .01 to 0.45. Okay. Now, using this, what we can consider? So, what we have to infer from this ratio? So, it is the ratio that is directly related to the diameter of the runner and the width of the spiral casing or width of the vein. Okay. So, this ratio has to be kept in mind while we are designing the runner. Okay. This ratio has to be taken into consideration. And then second one is flow ratio. Flow ratio which is uh, denoted with the K suffix EF which is flow ratio is the ratio of the velocity of flow at inlet to the theoretical jet velocity. So this is the ratio of the velocity of flow at inlet. We know the water is coming from the penstock. It will have some velocity. So this velocity is compared with the velocity that is calculated theoretically that is jet velocity. Now this velocity can be this formula is written as Vf1. This is the velocity, flow velocity over 2gh, 2gh, which is nothing but 2 times the gravity into head. Okay. This value always stays between 0 0.15 to 0 0.30. And then we have third one, speed ratio. Speed ratio is nothing but it is the ratio of velocity of the vane. U is nothing but the velocity of the vane over jet velocity 2gh jet velocity is nothing but the velocity of the jet of water that is coming out of the nozzle so this value will stay between 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 so these are the standard definitions using which we can design a turbine for a particular uh, energy generation for a particular work done and then we'll see some advantages so in the previous lectures, we have seen Pelton wheel, which is an open atmospheric uh, turbine. So, the pressure inside this turbine is very equal to the atmospheric pressure. There are no differences. Whereas, in reaction turbine, the pressure inside the turbine is very low and compared to the, the pressure outside. Okay. Now, we have some advantages of this uh, Francis turbine because the pressure inside the turbine is not equal to the atmospheric pressure. Why do we need this condition? Why do we need to make this pressure different from the atmospheric pressure? So, we will study in this uh, advantages. So, the first one is in Francis turbine, the variation in operating head can be more easily controlled. So, in this turbine, we have governing mechanisms where we can control the speed of water that is coming out of the penstock. And second point is in Francis turbine, the ratio of maximum and minimum operating heads can be even two. Okay. So, the ratio, this ratio maximum to minimum, this can be almost equal to 2. Okay. So, the minimum speed, minimum operating head can be as twice as maximum. And then third one is the operating head can be utilized even when the variation in the tail water level is relatively large when compared to the total head. So, this is the best advantage of this uh, reaction turbine where we will attach a tube called draft tube. We have seen this in the previous lectures. So, the invention or the attachment of this draft tube will make the water to remove from the turbine very easily. Okay. This is the key function of this turbine. Sorry. Key function of this draft tube where the water can be easily removed out of the turbine. So, fourth point is the mechanical efficiency of the Pelton wheel decreases faster with wear than Francis turbine. 
So in Pelton wheel turbine, the mechanical efficiency will decreases due to wear and tear because everything, every mechanical part is available or it is in contact with atmospheric pressure and atmospheric air conditions. Now the water that is coming out of the penstock is at atmospheric pressure and the water that is touching and uh, coming out of the water, coming out of the turbine is also at atmospheric pressure. So everything is done at atmospheric pressure. There is no extra pressure or nothing. So because of this, wear and tear is more. That is why the mechanical efficiency will decrease over the period of time in Pelton wheel. Whereas in Francis turbine, the mechanical efficiency will not decrease when compared to Francis. So the size of the runner, generator and powerhouse required is small and economical if the Francis turbine is used instead of Pelton wheel turbine. So the size of the runner, generator and powerhouse, these can be small when compared to other kind of uh, turbine that is Pelton wheel. Okay, why do we need this uh, small type of attachments like small runner, generator, power mains? We can actually develop a turbine of a compact size. Okay, so the runner, generator and powerhouse can be as small as compared to Pelton wheel. Pelton wheel turbine cannot be made small. And now in this slide, we are going to see some disadvantages. In this slide, we are going to see the first one is water which is not clean can cause very rapid wear in high head Francis turbines. So in Francis turbines, what the thing is, the water is, water has to flow into a spiral casing. So if the water contains more dirt particles, it may cause damage to the turbine veins. Okay. So that is why the water has to be filtered before it entering into the Francis turbine casing. And second one is the overhaul and inspection is more difficult comparatively to the Pelton wheel turbine. Here everything is closed like the turbine runner, everything is in the closed casing because we have to maintain a low pressure inside. So everything is closed, the inspection and uh, any kind of repairs will be very difficult when compared to other type of uh, turbines. And then third one is cavitation. Cavitation is ever presenting danger in this Francis turbine. We'll see what is cavitation in the coming lectures. So cavitation is very bad. This is one of the disadvantages of the Francis turbine. So we have to do something in order to overcome this uh, cavitation. And then the water hammer effect is more troublesome with Francis turbine. So this water hammer effect is also another danger thing which is causing the Francis turbine to malfunction or it may sometimes cause damage to the mechanical parts of the turbine. So this also has to be controlled and uh, this is another disadvantage. Okay, and the last point is that the Francis turbine runs below 50% of the head for a longer period. It will not only lose its efficiency, but also cavitation danger becomes more serious. We'll see what is cavitation in the coming slides. Okay, if the turbine runs below 50% of the head, when the head is below the 50%, it, it cannot perform very efficiently. Okay, it has to be replaced. And then another type of turbine is axial flow turbine. Now we'll see the introduction to axial flow turbines. It has been observed that with increasing specific speed, the flow tends to be axial. If the water flows parallel to the axis of the rotation of the shaft, the turbine is known as axial flow turbine. Now see here, this entire thing is different. This is all theoretical. We'll try to understand what is the basic uh, working of the turbine. So in this turbine, this is outward radial flow turbine outward flow turbine. That means water enters at the center. The water will be entering into the turbine at the center of the shaft. Okay. Water enters here and after it rotate and rotates, the water will be coming out in this direction. Like it will come out in the radial direction. This is the example of an outward radial flow turbine. Okay, this is also called as axial flow turbine because the water is flowing along the axial direction of the rotation of the runner. Okay, now we'll see what are the different types of axial flow turbines. There are two types, uh, propeller turbine and the second one is Kepler turbine. So we will discuss the propeller turbine in this lecture and we will see the Kepler turbine in the coming lectures. Okay, 
So in these turbines, all parts such as spiral casing, stay vanes, guide vanes, control vanes, draft tube, everything, everything is similar to reaction turbines. The only difference is the flow of water. Here the water will enter at the center of the runner and after it uh, entering into the guide vanes and from there entering into the vanes of the runner, from there it will come out in the radial direction. The water will come out of the turbine in the radial direction. Whereas in the previous turbine, that is Francis, it, it happens in the opposite direction. The water enters into the turbine in radial direction and from the center of the shaft, the water will come out, that is in the perpendicular direction. Okay. Now see here, there are some aspects where we have to see uh, some aspects uh, related to axial flow turbine. In axial flow turbine, the number of blades are fewer, hence the loading on the la blade is larger. Smaller contact area causes less frictional losses compared to mixed flow turbines, but the peripheral speed of the turbine is large. See here, water enter, enter here and it will come out through these holes in this direction, which will make the turbine rotate. Okay. So here, the number of blades are very less. They have to be kept less because the flow of water is very bad in this uh, direction. Okay. So very few amount of water can make the turbine rotate. Okay. And then axial flow rotors do not have a rim at the outer end like the Francis rotor, but the blades are enclosed in a cylindrical casing. See here, this does not have any kind of lining. These veins does not have any lining. They are just kept in a closed casing. Okay. So this will decrease the efficiency. Okay. And then tip clearance between the blade and the cylindrical casings is small. Hence the flow past blades can be considered two dimensional. See here, the clearance between the blades and the cylindrical casing is very small. If I keep a cylindrical casing here like this, this casing, the distance or gap between these two is very small because of which the flow can be considered as a two dimensional flow. It is not a three dimensional flow. Okay. Water will come in this direction and it will flow in the horizontal plane. Like it will be coming out in the plane direction. Okay. So this is another disadvantage. Okay. Now we'll see the water coming out of the guide vein undergoes a whirl, which is assumed to be satisfied uh, the law of free vortex. Yes, we can see the water that is coming out will have a free vortex velocity. That is C by R. Vw is equal to C divided by R. C stands for velocity of the water and R divides for the radius of the casing. Now in this uh, slide, we will see the working of a propeller turbine. We have seen in propeller turbine, it is a inward radial flow turbine where the water will enter in this direction and finally it will come out through this direction. Okay, the propeller turbine is a reaction turbine used for heads between 4 meters to 80 meters. When the head of the water in the reservoir is between 4 meters and 80 meters, this turbine can be used. It is purely axial flow device providing largest possible flow area that will utilize a large volume of water and still obtain flow velocities which are not too large. Okay, so this is a axial flow mixed turbine where the it can utilize large volume but it cannot produce large velocities. Okay, and then the propeller turbine consists of axial flow runner with four to six at the most of 10 blades of air foil shape. So the shape of these turbine blades are aerofoil and at most, mostly four to six blades are used and in some conditions up to 10 blades can be attached to this propeller turbine. So the propeller turbine is very similar to the Kaplan turbine, which we are going to see in the next lecture. Okay. The runner is generally kept horizontal. That is shaft is vertical. This is the shaft where this is the runner. Okay. This is the runner where the runner will rotate in the horizontal shaft and the horizontal plane and the shaft is in the vertical direction. The blades resemble the propeller of a ship. Okay. It is very similar to the propeller of a ship, which is used to drive the ship. Okay. 
in the propeller turbine as in francis turbine the runner blades are fixed and non adjustable whatever the blades that are attached to this shaft they are not mobile they are not adjustable at all whereas in francis turbine we can adjust the vanes the whatever the guiding vanes are there we can adjust them in order to increase the flow of water this is called governing mechanism and then the spiral casing and guide blades are similar to those in francis turbine so whatever the guiding mechanism is there in this uh, propeller turbine they are very similar to francis turbine now in this that is all for this lecture we will meet in the next lecture with the working of kaplan turbine which is a axial flow turbine where we will study its working work done and the different types of efficiencies thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates